All right, scholars, thanks for tuning in. We're going to take a look at the theory of evolution. So keep in mind that early Earth was a hostile place. It was hot. There were gases containing sulfuric acid coming out of these volcanic eruptions. The atmosphere had ammonia in it, which is a very strong chemical. There was not much atmosphere, so the amount of ultraviolet radiation from the sun hitting the Earth was intense. Nonetheless, um, life existed. And what we're going to take a look at is how life came to be according to the theory of evolution. So in these slides, we'll take a look at natural selection, evolution and biodiversity, and species and mass extinction. Evolution means genetic change across generations. Individuals do not evolve, at least their DNA does not evolve, but um, changes in DNA can occur in the sperm cells and the egg cells, and that can change offspring. So there can be evolution of a species from one generation to the next generation as there are changes made to the DNA. Natural selection is a process by which traits that enhance survival are passed on to future generations more than those that do not. And this alters the genetic makeup of populations over time. Here we see a draft population. This process of natural selection can help shape diversity. Adaptive traits give survival and therefore reproductive advantages. By an adaptive trait, we mean a trait that allows a species to live and thrive more than other individuals within that same population of species. So take this for example, a giraffe that has a longer neck would be more able to eat the vegetation to stay alive longer, therefore able to produce more offspring who would similarly have a long neck by the way the genes are transferred to the offspring. So the fact that this giraffe has a longer neck means that it has an adaptive trait for that. Remember that DNA is the macro molecule that stores genetic information. And here we see four different colors, orange, pink, purple, and yellow, representing the four different types of nucleotides, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. Mutations are accidental changes in DNA that occur when DNA is replicated as cells multiply and divide. So mutations that are not lethal provide the genetic variation on which natural selections act. Here we see a change, regular DNA, DNA with mutations where this G became an A, this T became a G. Now oftentimes these mutations can be corrected by the body. The process of DNA replication is not perfect, but there are enzymes in the body whose function it is to repair DNA that wasn't copied properly. However, sometimes DNA is not, um, is not repaired correctly, and you do get mutations that continue on um, through the process of cellular reproduction so that further cells receive this mistake, this mutation. So the idea is that through this mutation of DNA over eons of time can produce the variation that we see today in the world. Let's take a place like Costa Rica where we have a large variety of frogs, bugs, birds, and fungi. So we would say this area has high biodiversity. Biodiversity, or biological diversity, is the sum of an area's organisms. It takes into account the diversity of species and the variety of genes within species. So not only is it the number of different species, but it also is genetic variation within individuals of that species. Take humans, for example. We're all the same species, homo sapiens, but we all have variety within our genes. Uh, sometimes we refer to that as different races. A species is a particular type of organism that can freely breed with one another and produce fertile offspring. Humans and humans can produce baby humans. Um, humans and chimpanzees cannot produce uh, a human chimpanzee. We're different species. Cats and dogs don't breed together. So here we see a horse with a donkey, and uh, these are two different species. They cannot produce fertile offspring. The offspring they produce is called a mule, but that mule cannot mate with another mule. You will not get any babies from that. So they do not produce fertile offspring. 
This word speciation means the process by which new species come into being through the process of natural selection. There is a special kind of speciation called allopatric speciation. And this is the result of geographic or geologic events. So let's say we have a single population that is interbreeding of a squirrel. Now what if some flooding occurred where you now had two islands? These populations are now isolated from each other. And as each individual population goes through genetic mutations, it's possible that they might become so different that um, squirrel A and squirrel B can no longer interbreed. We would not say they are separate species. So um, as they evolve over time due to DNA mutation, we can see in the picture them being looking different. But the important thing is, can they still interbreed? If they can't, then we now say they are new. Then we now say they are new species. So even if the water recedes and they are not able to come together, they would still not be able to interbreed. They would still be two new species. So this is one way it can happen. What are some other possible geological causes for allopatric speciation? Think of any other reasons why a population may be split into two populations in two different regions who could then evolve independently. Take a moment to think about this. Pause the video. All right, let's see what you came up with. Here are some possible reasons given in your book. It could be glacial ice sheets, which advance. So, you know, a glacial ice sheet is like a, a slow-flowing frozen river. Mountain chains are uplifted, preventing um, a species being able to get from one area to another because now there's a major um, mountain in between. Major rivers often change course. Sea levels may rise, creating islands, as we just saw. Perhaps climate warms, pushing vegetation up mountain slopes and fragments, so that perhaps now um, a particular type of plant can only survive at higher elevations where it's colder, and all those, all the varieties of those which are lower um, perish. Or maybe the climate dries, dividing a large single lakes into a multiple smaller lakes. There could be ocean current patterns shift, or islands formed in the sea by volcanism. So when we think about all the variety that we see, we um, we like to characterize it into different um, different classes of organisms. So there are some major kingdoms. We have the animal kingdom. We have the plant kingdom, fungi. Then we have protists, like including algae. Um, bacteria is its own kingdom, and archaea, which is one that was discovered more recently. These are microorganisms that um, are apparently have a very ancient origin. So this phylogenetic tree is showing a history of where these different kingdoms may have branched off from each other. And animals over here, we're going to zoom in on that. As we zoom in, we can see that we can break it into sponges and jellyfish and flatworms, roundworms, mollusks, annelids, etc., and vertebrates. And we will see according to this timeline, according to this phylogenetic tree, that vertebrates branched off from other life forms most recently, and they have a backbone. If we zoom in on vertebrates, we can see lampreys and sharks and fish, uh, amphibians, mammals, birds, and we see from this that birds are one of the most recent um, type of vertebrates to have evolved from other species. So the point of this is that by looking at fossil records and by comparing DNA from different, um, different species, we can begin to get some sense for um, how they evolved from each other or how their lineages departed from each other throughout history. Again, through this process of random DNA genetic mutation. So this is a process as, that, as you can imagine, would take um, hundreds of millions of years or billions of years. We believe the Earth is about four billion years old. The first billion years was pretty much just the Earth becoming a somewhat habitable place. And then for a couple billion years, you have some maybe 
um, microorganisms occurring. Um, but most of the higher, higher, more complex animals that we see coming on the scene more in the last hundred millions of years. We think about the dinosaurs, the Jurassic period was about 200 million years ago. So think about Jurassic Park and those types of dinosaurs. We know throughout history there have been periods of extinction. Evolution has not always progressed in a straightforward manner or from simple to complex. We, um, there's a particular type of layer of rock called the Burgess Shale where the fauna, meaning the animals found there, were complex and bizarre marine animals from 530 million years ago that vanished completely. So um, there have been accelerated periods of extinction throughout Earth's history. By extinction we mean the disappearance of an entire species from the face of the Earth. There is another word that we'll learn in a little bit called extirpation, which is where a species disappears from one location on Earth. The average time for a species, for a species on Earth seems to be about 1 to 10 million years. And uh, of all the species that we've ever have known to exist from fossil records, about mm, a few percent of those are still alive today. So um, it's our geologically it's gone through a history of many different species appearing then disappearing. And the ones that we have on Earth now, of course, are the most, um, are what we have now. And um, so there are many that, ex that ex became extinct a while ago. Keep in mind, the species currently on Earth equals the number formed by speciation minus the number removed by extinction. And some species are more vulnerable to extinction than others, species in small populations. Um, because there's a smaller population, it doesn't take you don't have to lose as many members of that population before it finds before that population finds it difficult to succeed by having um, enough reproduction. Species are also uh, species that are adapted to a narrowly specialized resource, a way of life, are also very vulnerable to extinction. So are specialists. They are more vulnerable. Any change to the conditions that they require, and they're most likely going to go extinct. And uh, Monte Verdi's golden toad, which we'll discuss a little bit more in class was apparently such a specialist. And um, this lived in Costa Rica. It lives in small numbers in a small area. It was endemic to the forest, meaning occurring nowhere else. And until about 10,000 years ago, North America teemed with camels, mammoths, giant sloths, lions, horses, saber-toothed cats, and other large mammals. Many scientists think their extinction was brought on by hunting after human arrival. You've probably heard of the woolly mammoth. We, we know that these, uh, these are no longer existing possibly hunted to extinction. There have been some mass extinctions, in fact about five in Earth's history, where 50 or more percent of the species living at that time were wiped out. This has happened at about five different times according to the fossil record. One of the most important ones and most well known is an asteroid impact that happened 65 million, year, 65 million years ago, uh, as you can see here off the Yucatan Peninsula in Central America. And it is, it is largely accepted.